Hi, uh, this is my prediction for the September the 8th fight in Las Vegas between Lucas Mathis and Ojose Oluzigun. Um, this is really good light welterweight fight, but I don't know much about Oluzigun. All I know is what I've seen in highlight videos on YouTube and across the internet and what I've heard from other people and a few clips of his fights, but I don't even think I've even seen any of, <laughs> any of his fights in full. Um, I can't even remember if I watched his uh, Ali Shaba fight, which was his last fight, um, which he won by unanimous decision. I uh, don't even know if I've seen that fight yet. But anyway, what I know about Oluzagan from watching clips on him and all that is he's quite an erratic fighter. He's um, quite a um, relentless fighter. He looks like he's a pressure fighter. He looks like he looks like he when he's on the attack. He throws, you know, uh, throws the kitchen sink at you, but he can also fight on the back foot. Um, he's a bit Martinez-like, you know, Sergio Martinez in that he'll put his guard down, he'll start wobbling his head around, he'll do a bit of an Emmanuel Augustus in that he's, you know, he's quite eccentric. Um, but he also leaves himself wide open for punches because um, from what I've seen of him, he throws his punches from out wide. I mean, you can you can see them coming from a mile off. Uh, he'll, he'll throw his... It, you'll see him throwing his combos, and he's coming from out wide by a mile, which leaves him open to counters and uppercuts and just about everything. Um, and I can't imagine he's going to land a lot of punches like that against a class boxer, someone like a Juan Manuel Marquez, because guys like that, you know, don't get hit by punches that they can see from a mile off. So, um, but so far it's worked for him because he's still a domestic level fighter slash European level fighter because he hasn't had the chance to move up. And the reason it worked, why he hasn't had the chance to move up to world level just yet is because everyone keeps dodging him. Um, I think he's been on the the queue in the queue for a WBC title shot now for like two years. Um, I think Eric Morales dodged him. Um, then Garcia ha has refused to fight him. Uh, Danny Garcia is now going to fight Eric Morales in a rematch next. And, you know, good luck to them because I suppose basically from where they're coming from, where, from where Garcia and Morales are coming from, they're saying that they'll earn more money from fighting each other than they would from fighting this dangerous uh, Nigerian who's based in Britain. Um, which is true, which is the sad state of boxing, really. I mean... Garcia is now going to defend against Eric Morales in a fight which I think he's guaranteed to win because, you know, let's face it, Morales is long past his best um, and he's never regained his form at light welterweight like he once had at super bantamweight and featherweight, etc. Um, while Aluzagun has to wait his turn and now Aluzagun, he's now gone and got an even tougher fight than Garcia, in my opinion, which is the one against Lucas Mathis. Um... Mathis isn't gonna isn't a lighter option in the sense that he's not the world champion. Therefore, you know you'd think he's the lighter option, but he isn't. I'd say he's a harder option. Um, Mathis is gonna look at this as being his um, chance for another world title shot. Um, Mathis uh, stepped up to world level back in 2010 when he beat Vivian Harris in four rounds. But Vivian Harris um, has been on the down, you know, down slide for a while um but then after that not long after he then fought zab judah um what's it uh demarcus corley and devon alexander on the trot the D uh, demarcus corley victory was an impressive one um where he won by um, stoppage but the judah and alexander losses were both by split decision and two very controversial ones because just about everyone i've spoken to says that Mathis won both of them. He had both guys on the floor in those fights. Um, he was relentless throughout. He pressurised them. You know, basically, he just he won those fights, um, you know, frankly. Or well, at least one of them, but, you know, take your pick which one, because, um, like I said, most people thought he won both. So, um, Mathis, he's a pressure fighter. He's a big puncher. And like I said, he outboxed two skillsters in Alexander and Judah. So he's not just a limited puncher. I mean, in a fight like that, I would predict the boxer to win, just the same way I predicted Humberto Soto to beat Mathis, and Mathis stopped him in five rounds, because 
I tend to pick the the boxer against the um, against the brawler because you know people like Marquez are just superior in my opinion to you know uh, heavy-handed fighters but that's not always the way it works and anyway like I said Mathis is more than just a puncher as he's proven in his fight so far a Jose like I said um, from the clips I've seen he's a bit erratic he drops his guard sometimes he throws his punches from a mile out where you can see them coming and I think that's going to play into Mathis's hands I think that a loser gun will probably lose this one but I think he will lose I think he will do himself some good I think it will do himself a favor by losing because I think once he's got that first loss on his record um I think it will it will you know highlight what is wrong in his um you know skill set because I don't think you can throw those wide out um, punches which can be telegraphed from a mile away against the elite fighters because imagine if he did that to someone like Juan Manuel Marquez or Manny Pacquiao even or Floyd Mayweather they'd take him apart they'd tear him you know tear him apart so a loser gun I mean you can go for his record he beat Ali Sheba who's, who's quite a good fighter actually in his last fight by unanimous decision and he's beaten guys like Colin Lines and Nigel Wright and um Nigel Wright again, Gary Reed. These are all sort of British domestic level fighters. So, I mean, like I said, his best his best two wins were against Connie Lines and Ali Sheba. So, I don't think he's really got the experience for this one. But again, I I don't think this will come down to experience. I think this will come down to styles. And I think that um, with a loser gun and of course I'm almost guessing all of this because I haven't seen a full one of his fights I've only seen clips and all of that but from what I see I think Mathis is going to be punching him all night long straight down the middle and eventually I think Mathis could get the knockout so I think I'm probably going for Mathis to win by stoppage um, probably round somewhere between round eight and ten so let's say something like round nine um just because i think a loser gun is going to try to use that erratic style against him all night long and i think that's just going to fall into mathis's hands so mathis by latish stoppage